Hi guys, and welcome to part 91 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. Now in this video, I'm going to be covering a new mod called Familiar Faces. And this mod is a little different in that what it lets you do is import old characters into your current save game. Well, it does a little more than that as well. It also allows you to have a kind of Hall of Fame, a shrine of heroes to all of your past characters. These characters will look exactly as they looked when you played them. They will be wearing what they were wearing when you played them. And they will be surrounded by the symbols that define the journey they took whilst in Skyrim. It is actually a completely unique type of mod, really. When you first get in game after you've installed this mod, you will get a new entry in the mod configuration for familiar faces. Uh, I'm going to ignore that right now. But you will also, if you go to your inventory under the miscellaneous, get a portal stone. And if you click on this, you will exit the menu and magically teleport to the Shrine of Heroes. in a very, very cool manner. <laughs> now, as you can probably already see, there are two existing heroes. One is Richard, and the other is Steve. However, we're going to ignore them for now. You can see plenty of empty alcoves around this hall. And in front of each is a book. Now, it is called the Tome of the Dragonborn, and you can activate this, and then you can either, well, you can either cancel or begin writing. And what this is, is essentially transferring your character's life story to this particular alcove. And what will happen? Well, <laughs> you can see what happens. This is one of those mods that almost does not need me to talk about it. <laughs> I can literally show you and it will sell itself. Now, let's go to first person. The light will fade reasonably soon, but as you can see, Godkrieg is now entered into the Shrine of Heroes. There usually are things like um, symbols on the floor which can give you some clues so for example Steve is a vampire Richard is a werewolf now Godkrieg used to be a werewolf but he cured himself the banners here he is the dragonborn he is a stormcloak um, no sorry that's the stormcloak one I, I think so the dragon skull above him means he has slain Alduin and he is the head of the companions so as you can see all of his major deeds immortalized now if you continue on playing with that character and he progresses does some new quest lines and you want that remembered don't worry you can go along to the tome of Godkrieg and write down more of your story or you can leave it as it is or even destroy it. Essentially, that's a delete save, I suppose. You write down more of the story, and it will redo the whole thing. As you can see, there are a lot of places available, so this should be able to handle most of your characters. And once you are finished, just step back to the portal, activate it, and you are on your way once more to Tamriel. The mod is completely compatible with mods such as a race menu, and so you should keep all of your tattoos, replacers, textures, and so on. So your character should look as you remember him. And they keep all their equipped armor, including things like names, customized names, and so on. Uh, modded items seem to work just fine, although there is a problem with quest items, things that cannot be dropped, uh, so they may not get copied. 
The character keeps things like spells, shouts, and even perks, although the spells you get from mods will not be kept. I'm not sure about the perks, but the spells will not be kept. Oh, and I did notice that the vampire symbol on the floor only appears if you are a Dawnguard vampire. If you are a standard vampire, it does not actually appear. Now, whilst this kind of Hall of Fame feeling, this little museum of past characters is all very cool in of itself, it is not the only thing this mod actually lets you do. Believe it or not, you can summon old characters into existing games and it can be characters from different saves you can summon them from any of your characters and actually have them as either enemies or followers so you've decided you're going to take along one of your old characters as a companion with one of your new ones once you've made your choice you can simply summon him and send him to Tamriel. However, before you do that, it might be a good idea to check the mod configuration for familiar faces. Uh, there are a number of uh, things you can change. It'll also you know, give you a list of characters you've currently set up, but you can also change the character set set up for each character. So, for example, as you can see, Godkrieg, this is my Nord male warrior. Um, his voice type is default. Unfortunately, obviously, the voice is not actually going to be yours. Um, so, <laughs> there you go. Class. I would leave it as default. The, the mod will figure out what fighting style to use for the character, depending on the spells and abilities he had. However, you can actually change it if you want to have a little bit more control. And you can decide where the hangout is. So perhaps you would like him to hang out in... Let's have a think. Where would be a good place to hang out? Riverwood. There you go. Going to have him hang out in Riverwood. This means when you summon him, that is where you're going to find him. You can also make him an enemy of, your, of the player. You can also set it to be can marry the player and so on. So I've set this as I want. Riverwood. I'm going to... Exit there, and then I'm going to activate. Open the book. And there he goes. Off to Riverwood, hopefully. There you go, God Krieg awaits you near Riverwood. Now this is fortunate because that is actually where we came from. Now I will tell you one thing. You if there. You're the one they call could you excuse me a second? Okay, sorry about that. Right. Now I've spotted our friend Godkrieg over here. Follow me. I need your help. And that's it. I now have a Nord warrior follower. One who is also dragonborn and has killed Alduin already. Eh, yeah, I'm sure I'll get used to that. Now, there is one thing you should know about. It's a, it's a small bug. I managed to break the mod uh, doing something rather silly. If you have the character as a follower, do not then go along and make him an enemy. As he won't attack you because he's also your follower. Um, and it will mess up all the follow routines. If you want to fight him... If you want to test yourself against one of your old characters, tell him it's time to part ways first. And then... decide that he's an enemy. Because now you'll get the chance to fight him. And honestly, he's going to utterly destroy me because I don't have my perks set up with this character. <laughs> for this current mod. Yep, he's... What? All I did was hit, you barely took a scratch. Get up. Oh, that's embarrassing. That really is embarrassing. Oh, look, he is, like I said, gonna, gonna, gonna mess me up. He is gonna mess me up. <laughs> anyway, um, you get the idea, right? Um, I'm wondering, can I, can I make him not an enemy all of a sudden? 
familiar faces. Yes, excellent! Don't look at me like that. In the end, this mod is actually incredible. I mean, it's one thing to be able to play alongside one of your old characters, but honestly, the Hall of Heroes is, is, is why I love this mod. It's the idea that I can come back and visit all of my old characters. I can, I can look at them all in some kind of, well, Shrine of Heroes, Hall of Fame. That is pretty damn incredible. It is a massive reminder as to how much time I have spent in the game of Skyrim. It is quite simply the biggest nostalgia mod I have ever tried. So, a big thank you to the mod author for this one, and a big thank you to all of the guys in the live stream who suggested I try this one out. It was well worth testing. <laughs> it really was. A word of warning for any obsessive compulsive people out there. There are 12 alcoves for you to place your characters in. Which means unless you have 12 characters, there are some empty ones. And you have to ask yourself this question. Can you leave them empty? Or are you going to have to play the game a few more times? <laughs> oh, God. Um, I would just like to briefly mention the installation, which is not complicated, but it does have a few requirements. The first requirement is SKSE 1.70, which is the alpha build. As you can see here, it is the alpha build. You need that. Now, I've been running that since it came out quite some time ago actually um it's the one that comes with a built-in memory patch and so on so it's, it's actually the pat the build i would always recommend you will need it for this mod you also need sky ui a 4.1 or higher for the mcm system don't worry if you do not like the sky ui interface for some reason and there are a few people but you want mcm there are, there are ways around it. I have done a video on how to get MCM without SkyUI, and I will link it right about here, and you can install that. You don't need the MCM system. You don't need the MCM to, to use this mod, but you won't be able to change any of the settings whatsoever, which makes it a little hard to use. You are going to need J containers 0.67.3 or higher. Uh, that is a requirement. And race menu 2.7.7. For those of you who don't know what race menu is, I did a video devoted to this, and you can go and find out. It's actually a great mod if you like to customize your character's appearance in far more ways than is possible with the vanilla system. However, this mod requires the chargen.dll file that comes with that. So you are going to either need to install this mod or open that mod up, find the chargen.dll skse plugin and place it in the correct place. I recommend for most people just install the race menu. Even if you're not that interested in changing your character's appearance too much, there's no harm in having this installed. It's just an advanced version of the race menu. There is a list of compatible mods and uh, even mods that work, but with uh, some caveats. And there are a couple of mods that do not work, that are known not to work with it. One is the Enhanced Character Edit mod, and the other is the HDT Physics hair does not work. When you have installed this mod, you will actually notice in the data folder a new folder called VMYC and it has some JSON files inside it. You can pretty much ignore it, but that is the data for all the characters that you import. If you uninstall the mod, it actually leaves this folder behind. You can delete it if you want. You can actually delete that if you want, and then the mod has completely gone, but you can also leave it. It will not harm your game in the slightest. The files are, you know, they're not that big. You can leave them behind, and then if you ever import if you ever install the game once again, sorry, if you ever install the mod once again, 
the characters that you've already imported will be available for you there and then, so you don't have to go through the process again. So you can leave them there. It's completely up to you. And one last question that I know is going to be asked. Can you save your character this way and then send it to other people so that they can actually load your characters into game? And the answer is, yes, you can. Uh, what you're going to need to do is go into the VMYC. And for example, if I was to pick Steve, I would need to copy this file, the JSON file. I would also need to go to the um, SKSE plugins charge n exported and find the Steve Grofer.slot file. And then finally, I need to go to data, textures, charge n exported, and again, Steve Grofer.dds. You're going to need those three files. It is listed here in the Q&A, uh, what you can do. You get those three files and you send them to whoever else and they need this mod installed, obviously, and they place those files in the exact same places when they go to their Shrine of Heroes, they will be able to look at whichever character you've sent them and be able to actually summon him into the world to fight alongside with you. And again, as I mentioned, that does not include the voice, unfortunately, so it will use one of the default voices. However, it is possible. Anyway, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it was useful. I am, of course, going to end with some screenshots that you guys have sent in. A big thank you to everyone who has done that. If you would like to submit your own screenshot, you are more than welcome to do so. There is a link down below, uh, and I do appreciate it, so thank you very much in advance. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next Skyrim Mod Sanctuary, or whichever video you decide to join me for. And until then, remember, as always, have fun.